Aloha guys, welcome back. This is Ukalele FPV. Today we have a video that I am very excited to show you guys. I am sorry that I have been absent for a month or two. It is because I have recently moved and I have started going to pharmacy school. So I do not have as much time as I used to, but I am trying to still do videos. I have a few things coming up, but this is the one that I want to get done as soon as possible. I am most excited about it because as you can see, we are going to be looking at the Nirvana NV14. It is the new radio from Fly Sky and has had a lot of hype recently on the internet and Facebook as it was a radio designed by Fly Sky with underground FPV to get everything that they wanted in a radio. It will be replacing my Turnigy Evolution and we will compare the sizes there. But firstly, I just want to do a quick unboxing. As you can see, the box is pretty nice. It comes in a well-packaged box. And actually, I got this from Amazon, so it's not the underground FPV version. It had another box that was on the outside of this to protect the box that it came in. Inside the box, it comes with a little thing that shows the radio, first of all. And it's just a little foam protecting pad to help package and protect it along with all the other stuff. Then you get warning, a warning for the lithium ion batteries. It is using the 18650 lithium ion batteries and you need to make sure as it shows in here that you get the polarity right. You do not want to stick it in and turn it in, turn it on with the polarity backwards, especially if you have two batteries because that could cause some issues. Then we get the stickers which I think are pretty cool, though I do not use stickers all that often. You can see here Nirvana and then the Fly Sky there and Underground FPV. So as I said before, this was something that they did together, a radio that they've been working on for a long time. Then in here we have a little box. Inside the box there is a cord for charging it because the controller has a little micro USB port that you can use for simulators on the computer and for direct charging of the batteries while they are inside of the controller. It also comes with little adapter for your modules. If you want to use an external module, you screw this onto the back of the controller with the included screws and then it plugs in just like any other radio. We also get two receivers, the micro receiver, which if you can see is really tiny. I do not have the biggest hands and this is perfect for a two inch, two and a half inch, maybe even a three inch if you're not going too far. And then they have the new receiver, which is the X8B, IX8B I believe. And it is not too big, but also not too small. We will look at a quick comparison of this with some of the other receivers that I have in a minute. And then lastly, it comes with a little cord for the port. If you are using a trainer port, there's that. I do not use that currently, so it will go unused. Lastly, there's a little user manual in here, quick start guide that tells you the precautions, all the different parts of it, and quickly how to get started. The how to bind the X8B and the IAX, IA8X, how to power on and off, talks about the SD card and all the installation. So let's look at the radio itself. The radio is pretty hefty. I'm not exactly sure how much it weighs, but it feels definitely heavier than my Turnigy Evolution. Quick side-by-side -side comparison here. You can see that the Nirvana looks a little bit wider and it is just slightly wider than the Turnigy Evolution. But all in all, I think it is similar in size to most of the other radios that are out there. It just has the nice game controller feel to it. Looking at it this way, it is still slightly bigger than the Evolution and they both come with the protective cases for your gimbals and the touchscreen. 
One thing to note about this controller is that a lot of people were turned off by this rainbow finish that is on all of the metal that comes on the Nirvana. As I said, it comes with this nice protective case to get it off. You just pop it off from the back because it hooks on right there. The controller itself has some really loose gimbals. A lot of people have complained about that. Some people are getting different springs so that they can change the tension on the controller itself. But for me, this will be fine. I am a thumber and I like having loose gimbals. Looks like the two power buttons here and then a screen protector comes on with the screen right here in the middle. This is a big bright touch screen. I feel like it is unnecessary, but some people like it. It is just how they did it. We got some trim buttons here. You got the pots. There's a momentary switch, two-way switches, a one three-way switch here. On the top here, there's the trainer port and a USB port. As I said before, that is for charging and using simulators. This radio comes with OpenTX, so all of us FlySky users, we will have to learn how to use OpenTX, but in the future, we'll be able to use Lua scripts, and because it is OpenTX, it is compatible with Crossfire, R9M, all other modules that you might be using. I will be putting a R9M into this long-range receiver, as well as a multi-protocol receiver to see how it does. On the back here, there are these nice little handles, especially for those that want to pinch. You can just stick your fingers back there and hold it. I, as a thumber, it also fits really nicely and it makes it have a nice grip to it. There's also the antenna here that you can flip up. As far as I know, this is a diversity radio so there is another antenna on the inside that supposedly is directional. They might be putting on a model finder in the future. Then on, you can see where it screws in for the multi-module and then the pins are there. Comes with a couple more switches, momentary switches, and then three-way switches right here. All in all, I think this radio is going to be one of my favorites and I can't wait to try it out. One thing I forgot to mention is that the batteries do go in here so you just unscrew it and then throw your batteries in then you can charge it up with the USB or already have your batteries pre-charged. You're supposed to be able to do some hot swapping with the batteries so if the batteries start to die you can keep one battery in, unscrew the other one and throw it back in but I'm not sure if that is really a good idea. I'll have to do some testing and see what other people are saying. But as for now, I'm just going to have the batteries that I have. I have LG batteries that are going to go into there and hope that it charges perfectly fine with the USB because I do not have a charger specifically for lithium ion batteries. As I said earlier, we're going to do a quick comparison of some of the receivers with the new ones that come. Here is the IA8X next to the RX2A. And as you can see, they are very similar in size. They are exactly the same size, actually. One just is designed by FlySky directly, and this one is supposed to be a designed by somebody else. I am not sure how they compare in how far they can go and the receiving distance, but I am excited to see another officially licensed by FlySky receiver out there on the market. The other one is the X8B, which if you compare to the X6B is slightly smaller it is about just as wide and it also has diversity but it is a couple millimeters smaller if you are needing that for your build and then compared to the ia 
6C. With the case, it is definitely smaller, but when you take the case off, they are very similar to the X6B again. So those are just the receivers that came with it. I am excited to be able to put these onto a quad and see how they do compared to the receivers that I have been using. And as I said before, I cannot wait to try out this radio. I hope to be doing a couple more videos going over OpenTX, how to download it and put it onto your radio and maybe looking a little bit over the menu. We will see if I am able to do that, but I hope that I will be able to keep continuing to make videos about this. I am a really big fan of FlySky. It is what I started with. I know a lot of people are into some of the other radios, but I think that FlySky is a good place, especially if you are a beginner and you start with one of the cheaper radios, you get all your quads with the same FlySky receivers. And then you can upgrade to a radio like this, which many people are also excited about. Anyway, I hope that you have a wonderful day. Thank you for watching. If you like what I am doing, please like and subscribe. If not, it's okay, I understand. Anyway, have a great one. Aloha.